Sup tag birds, Lottie here. Uh, voice is feeling a lot better. Today we are going to be timing the Meteor 4B. First we're going to cover what you need to know and then we're just going to run step by step exactly um, what you need to do. So follow along if you've got one at home. Uh, by all means just watch and have fun. Okay, here is our Meteor 4B. We've got it set up on a stand, but it is set up exactly the way it would be set up in the tank. So this would be the back of the tank, this would be the front of the tank. As it is, um, we separate the sides of the engine into A bank and B bank. A bank is the one closest to me, B bank is on the far side. And the cylinders are numbered from one to six. So going from the back of the tank to the front of the tank. The only ones we need to be concerned with are this bank here, which is A1. It will even tell you, um, stamped in to each little bit and piece. So this is bank A1. And we also need to be concerned with bank B2. Your first step is to make sure that all of your tappets have been set correctly. Um, so we've done all of these, they're all good. Next, you need to rotate your engine so that the inlet uh, is the inlet side is opening on B6 and B1, uh, sorry, A1. To do this, you simply rotate the engine um, by use of a ratchet on top, turn it over, and just make sure um, you are just on opening. So if we look down here, you can see that the cams are just engaging. So this is B6 IO. Once we're in that position, we remove this drive here by simply removing the uh, C-clip and lifting it up. I'll insert a quick little video showing that process being done. and then we zip tie it out of the way. That way, when you rotate the engine, this cam does not move. Likewise, we do the same on A1. So we rotate the engine, get it to the point where the A1 inlet valves are opening, and then we remove the C-clip and lift the spline out and zip tie it in place. Now we have a engine that can be rotated without rotating the camshafts. Next, we want to access the bottom of the engine. Bear with me. Coming under here, you will need some sort of tool to remove the plug here. We just use a um, thick bit of steel on a, um, on a drill bit. I'll show you that in a bit. And we need to access the bottom. This is the timing annulus, the little arrow that you can see. As the engine rotates, those marks will rotate uh, around with it. We are looking for A1 IO, which is the mark it is sitting on right now. And just make sure that it is lined up when the camera <laughs> lines up correctly, focusing. Once we've rotated the engine to this point, we can get back up. And we can drop our pin back in, and then this side will be timed correctly. Then we go on to the other side, which I'll show in a bit, and do the exact same thing. Yep, so Peter is now cutting the zip tie. <laughs> Are you ready with the camera? Right. There we go. So with the zip tie removed, we can now insert the spline. If it doesn't fit in, just simply rotate it as Peter is doing. It will find its home. Sometimes it takes a few tries. So you can see he's just lifting and rotating. 
Sometimes it takes a bit. <laughs> oh, good evening. That's it. There we go. So you can see um, when it wasn't lined up correctly, it wasn't going down all the way. And now it is down all the way, like so. Then we simply put the uh, C-clip back in. Fun little fact for you, this C-clip uh, can uh, deteriorate with time. And if it gets to the point that it um, disintegrates, the timing of the engine can be thrown off. It's very unlikely, but it does happen. We've had it happen to us. It's something of a urban legend amongst Centurion engines, mm -hmm. but it can and will happen over time. In. There we go. Awesome. Free plate. Right, done. Wonderful. That is now the A bank on the Meteor timed. To reiterate, what we did was rotate the engine, making sure that we are just coming onto the inlet opening for the A1 bank, which is this bank here, specifically these two. We're just on opening. As you can see down here, we rotate the engine once more until the timing annulus under there tells us that we are on the A1 IO mark. And then we lock our timing back in by use of the spline and C clip. Next, I will show you how to do the B side. Okay, so as we are under the engine, Peter is now turning the engine over. We have just timed the A1 um, inlet opening mark. We are now going to B6IO. And slowing down. So this mark coming up is the one we are after. This is the B6IO mark. So keep going slowly, Peter. A little bit more. A little bit more. And teeny, teeny little bit more. Stop. And that is it. We are now on the B6 IO mark. That means that the piston inside the engine are set up correctly for this side provided that we have these set correctly, which we do. So now we can remove our little clip here. I'll go around here. <laughs> okay. And we can drop the spline in. Again, just rotating until we get the correct spline. And there we go. You can see that there is a definitive drop and it is now in place. Peter will simply replace the uh, C-clip and that is the cam timing on the Meteor set correctly. Okay, so your cam timing should now be set. Before we go any further, you need to check to make sure that you aren't 180 out. I will show you that right now. So we have it set up on the B6 mark. So essentially, 
Uh, the easiest way to check is to make sure that the lobes on the A1 mark are up or down and that it is the same for this one. So for instance, right now we have the A1 marks pointing up and the B6 marks are also up. The lobes are on the top of the camshaft. That is the easiest way to check to make sure that your A bank and your B bank are timed correctly. Off the top of my head, the firing order goes something like um, A1 and then B2. So you can check that as well. From here, we can now start to look at our magneto timing. The magneto timing will always go magne uh, sorry, exhaust side first and then inlet side. Here we go. This is the bit that you need to be concerned about. Basically, the marks on the timing annulus, which I'll show you in a second, but they look similar to these ones. If you're running a um, 4B, these timing marks will appear different, and I'll show you why. Um, but essentially, these timing marks, the A1 top dead center is where the inlet mag should be. Ignore that one there. Um, but it will be three degrees before top dead center. And when we read the book, using a bit of mental math, you can find out that the inlet and the exhaust magneto timing marks are five degrees different. And we need to be three degrees before each of those. I will show you what I mean underneath the tank. Sorry, underneath the engine. Running under here. You can see that the engine is now set on A1IO, but it is 180 degrees. Let me focus on that. It is 180 degrees out from our first um, set of markings. So even though it says A1IO, we are actually on the firing sequence for the A1 um, piston. The reason I use this mark to time the magneto is because if we remember before, you'll see that there are three distinct lines. The one that the timing annulus is pointing at right now, the one next to it, which is the A1 exhaust magneto timing, and then there's a third one just in the dark spot over there on the right, I think, that says A1 top dead center in mag. That is the mark for the inlet magneto. The space between the second and the third marking is five degrees. So if you take roughly half of that, you'll be about two and a half degrees forward of where the timing um, is normally. And that is the marking we want. It sounds a little counterintuitive that they would put the markings sort of dead center rather than where they actually should be. But trust me, we run all of the Centurions this way, three degrees before the markings, and they sound fantastic. It just so happens that the A1 IO mark is the perfect marking for the exhaust magneto. So if you set your engine up exactly this way, you can install your exhaust magneto. When we do the inlet magneto, I put the timing annulus halfway between the second and the third marking, and that uh, does perfect. <coughs> I'm losing my voice again. Uh, that is perfect for timing the inlet magneto. I will now show you what that looks like. Standing up. So your engine should look exactly like this. We will go and find the exhaust magneto, which Peter put down somewhere over here. Okay, this is our exhaust magneto. The next big mistake that people make is on the magneto itself. So remember this side, the B side of the engine is the exhaust magneto coupling side. We have our exhaust magneto. Everyone makes the mistake 
of timing the mark on this bit here. This is a casting mark to line up, uh, where is it? The cap. The cap should have a little arrow on it. If I can find it, it'll be on the other side. There we go. This little arrow here lines up with this mark. This is not a timing mark. I'm going to say that again. It is not a timing mark. The timing mark is on the face. You see that little A1 right there? That is the timing mark. Yes, it's very close, but it can make all the difference, especially when we're talking about degrees of such small quantitude. Okay, so you simply want to, it's really hard to do this with one hand, but essentially you put it on the A1 mark and then insert your magneto. I'm not going to do that right now because we will be painting the engine. But that is essentially how you do it. Then you rotate the engine, put the mark, the timing annulus between the second and the third mark, like I said, that'll be between three and two, two and a half degrees um, forward, uh, of the normal mark, which is where you want it to be, and then you install the other side. Job done. There you have it. If you have any questions about any of the timing, ask it down below, uh, and I will try to answer it as quickly as possible. Um, otherwise, go out and buy a Meteor engine, and you can do your own timing fun. But yeah, just double check, triple check. We've done this so many times now and we still get 180 degrees out that's just the way these things are v12s can just be really sort of number crunching just break it back down to basics double check your work with what we've got here and you'll have a perfectly fine running engine if you don't believe me watch some of my other videos where we take this tank out and it doesn't skip a beat so i will see you on the next one ask plenty of questions uh, and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.